Hello and welcome to another video by Bite Size Security. My name is Jimmy and today I'm extremely excited to bring you a bit of a different video, a video that you have all re requested and it's going to be a deep dive into my setup and my configuration for when I hack basically. Uh, a lot of you have been asking um, about my note keeping, about my terminal and so I just figured I would do a little video, a short one this time where I explain all of that. Now before I begin, I would like to take a minute to just thank you guys for the massive amount of support. I mean, I have one video that has a thousand six hundred views. I did not expect this at all. And I'm just incredibly humbled and happy and um, I'm glad um, a lot of people seem to find use and knowledge in my videos. So thank you guys for the support and I will definitely keep it up. Now, if you find um, knowledge or if you like the video, make sure to leave the video a like, drop a comment if you have any other questions, any other requests, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more content. Now, with all of that out the way, let's just begin. On to the first question. What operating system do I use? And this is a common question among people and they often ask, what operating system should hackers use? Now, most say Kali Linux. And my answer is, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is what you are comfortable with. Now, I've seen a lot of bug bounty hunters that use a simple Mac and a command line. As long as you have a computer that has enough RAM and doesn't get stuck when it runs an, a browser and another application, you're good to go. It just comes down to what tools you can install and how efficient you can work on it. But now for me, I use Windows as my main host and I run VirtualBox and on that I will have a virtual machine um, that is running either Windows or Ubuntu or for my main hacking machine, Parrot OS. Now, when it comes to the setup of Parrot OS, I'm not going to make, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into that because um, Ipsec, the god of hacking YouTube videos, has made a one hour and a half video already about this. And so I figured I will put that link in the description and you can just go check that one out if you want to use Parrot OS. So, next question. You have now installed Parrot OS and you are now on this blank uh, menu, like you can see here. And by default, you will have a bit different icons here, but I believe the standard terminal that you will have is the Mate terminal, I believe, I'm not sure. And if you go with the IPSEC setup, it will already do certain things with the, with the coloring and I just liked that coloring and so I kept it that way. But anyway, what I use as my main terminal is Terminator. So there too, you can just type sudo apt get install and then Terminator. And that will install this type of um, terminal and you can then just get straight into using that. The reason why I used Terminator in the beginning is because you could do Control Shift E and O to split the panes like this. Now, in the beginning when I started uh, hacking, I was quite intimidated by Tmux. Tmux is the terminal multiplexer, which I will get into in a second. And I was a bit intimidated by the different ses sessions and you had to attach panes and uh, it, was all, it was all a bit much for me. And so Terminator was a relatively lightweight solution alternative for me. And all I had to learn was two or three shortcuts, which is Control Shift E, Control Shift O and Control Shift T to open a new window. And I could do everything I wanted. Now, 
As I started becoming more advanced, a bit more advanced, and would need to manage various windows, the need to maybe name a window or quit a session and then come back into it rose up and I needed a different solution. Now, having gotten used to uh, the workflow with different panes and windows, Tmux was now the next logical conclusion for me and I was then ready to use Tmux. And essentially, Tmux is quite easy. First, you go into Google and you type Tmux cheat sheet. And this one right here used to be screenshotted onto my desktop at all times and so if i had any doubts on how to access and i still revisit this image now by the way if i had any doubts on how to do any type of commands with tmux i would just go to this image and check out what exactly you can do and how now i went a bit too fast ahead and let's go back to the terminal and now uh, ask the third question. And that is, what shell do I use? Now, if you type echo, let me not make a mistake here, but I believe it's echo shell, there you go. You can either use uh, sh, bash or zsh. I really like CSH and that is not the case for everyone but I do and I'll show you why let me go back into Google if you want to install CSH I believe it's also just sudo apt get install CSH let me try that and it will just say that it's already installed but uh, yeah so you install CSH and then you go on to O, my ZSH, and again, all links that I go to will be linked in the description and it will just all be there for you to go back and find out. But anyway, you go on to O, my ZSH, and this is a framework basically that lets you customize your, your terminal with countless uh, plugins and themes and it will just look all fancy don't spend too much time personalizing this and actually do some hacking because i speak from experience i've spent hours setting up my zsh but anyway now it looks nice so if you want to install oh my zsh you press on oh my zsh and you will have two ways of installing it you just copy that and you paste it onto your terminal like so and then you run it and that will then bring me to the next thing and that is what configuration do you use for csh and this is um a question that i will answer in uh, little parts so if i write config right this is a alias to get into the configuration file for ZSH. Now, any type of shell that you use will have the configuration file on your root directory and you will be able to just, with whatever text editor you're using, go into it. So for example, I use Sublime Text. <laughs> Sorry, let's go to the next question and then come back. What editor do you use? Now, I use Sublime Text. Now, you can use Vim. Uh, again, that's an entire subculture, just like, for example, Arch Linux instead of Parrot OS. But I use Sublime Text. You could also use Gedit, also great. There was a few things that I didn't like over the years, so I stopped using that. But anyway, Sublime Text, so if I write st like this, I will have all my folders in the root directory open up. And you should have, if you're using bash as a shell, a bash rc file. Let me just bring this forward a bit. 
maybe make this, okay, I cannot make this bigger. But anyway, you'll have bash RC, or you will have um, the dot Z -A -A -Z -S -H RC. These are the configuration files for whatever shell you're using. Now, if I type a config, I automatically enter my .zshrc file. Now you're asking yourself, how do you do that? How can you just enter the config file with by writing config instead of sublime.slash.zshrc? And that is through the use of aliases. Now, I will not show you all of my aliases, I will just show you how to create an alias and then you will spend the time of perfecting your own config and uh, getting to grips with what you like because it's it's a learning curve for all of us and it's really important that you guys figure out what you like and what works for you if you just use what i like uh, it won't feel the same so yes so an alias works this way you just type alias and then you write the name of the alias that you want. So let's say config and then you say equal and then you give the commands that you want it to execute. Now the bash RC file or the ZSH RC file has to be run as sudo to make it take effect. So you would say sudo and then sublime because I would like to open it with sublime text and then the home directory of the current user and then dot zh zshrc like so and now this would be an alias that if you then go back into your terminal and you write zsh to load the terminal again then you could then write config and it would load this file now let's cycle back a bit and finish the setup of oh my zsh and i'm sorry for going back and forth but that is just naturally how i'm explaining this thing to make most sense once you have installed oh my zsh you will get all of this text in there automatically and this is where you can customize plugins now there are hundreds of plugins and i've tried quite a few but after a bit of experience and a bit of trying around, there's only about two that I like well enough to keep them. The rest for me are gimmicky or are not part of my use case. So I use a ZSH syntax highlighting and Sublime. That's it. I used to have the auto suggestion on, uh, auto suggestions on, but I figured that if you're constantly being shown what you want to type then you get lazy and forget how to type it by heart so then if it's not being shown to you you no longer know and so it's a, a self-discipline kind of thing where i no longer use the auto suggestions simple as but yeah those are the only two plugins that i use and then if you install a plugin you then have to source it so uh, if you let me just show you how to do that if you go into the plugins and let's say you want to download the suggestions one let's hope i find it of course not uh, i believe the suggestions one you have to go onto google and then oh my csh auto suggestion like this this as well, I will link in the description. And then here you would have a way to install it. So you just clone it and then add it to the plugins like this. It's very simple. Let me go back to Google in, term, in, in case I need to Google something else. Now, where are we? Yes, so I've shown you how to add a plugin and I've shown you how to create an alias. Now, let me show you Tmux. So, the reason I like Tmux is because of how lightweight and efficient it is. 
uh, and it just also looks great. So for example, the way I use Tmux a lot is I will have, let's say I will have um, the VPN running for uh, Hack the Box. So I can just, I have an alias for almost everything. So I have Hack the Box VPN and that will then open up, right? And then I can name this pane just VPN and it will be written there in the middle just VPN with a, with a zero and I know that if I have another pane open let's say another three panes open I can just say go back to the pane zero and I will immediately be on the window of the VPN so multiplexer in the sense that you can have simultaneous command lines open and just very efficiently and quickly navigate between them now I know this was all a bit quick and complicated let me go back a bit and let's go to pane number one how did I do that so when you install tmux in the beginning you have a control command let's say you have to press this command first and then you press any other key on the keyboard the standard default control command is control B, I believe, or C. I believe it's C. And I didn't like that. And I will show you how to change that in a second. I changed it to control A because it's just easier with the fingers. It's closer to how I keep my hand on the keyboard. And so I just press control A very quickly. And then I press whatever other key and it will just be fast and simple so let's say i want to open just like i did before with terminator a pane to the right i'll press Control a and then shift two <laughs> of course i made a mistake there that is for the horizontal split um the vertical split would be shift five there you go i had to make a mistake there didn't i so Control a shift five is to split on the right and control a shift two is to split vertically and here as well then i can again with control a comma i can name this pane to say random and this will just then be the pane where i do random stuff now if you want to close a pane you just press control d i say but then you can also say control X and that will ask you to kill that pain. And you can do that. If you want to kill the entire window, you can say control A and I believe seven. Uh, control A shift seven. Yes, control A shift seven. And that will ask you to kill the entire window. So for example, if there's a window that's stuck, you can just do that and it's within the tmux container kind of i believe that's how it works there's little containers for each um for each pane each window and you can just easily close everything they're not interdependent so if one gets stuck you can just easily close it that is also very important and then let me close that and let me close this vpn um, if I want to leave out of Tmux, I can say control A D and then I detach from that session. Obviously, this is now session zero, which means you can have various sessions. This is great. So let's say you're working on a project. Let's say a pen test for one client. You will have a session open and do all of the operations for that client there. And then you just quickly change to another session and you will have the client B on that session. I believe maybe, I would have to check, you can even share sessions. That would be insane. I would have to uh, research this after. Now, how do you manage this Tmux configuration? Because um, how you change, for example, the control command from control A, a uh, control C, sorry, to control A, well, let me go back into my Tmux, Tmux, attach, no, sorry, 
Yeah, Tmux attach T, I believe. Yes, Tmux attach T, and then whatever session you want to go back into. I only have one open, so just T is enough to go back into that one session. How do I edit my Tmux session? Well, I write an alias that for me is Tmux conf like that. And then here as well, that would be alias tmux conf equals and then sudo subal and then I believe it would be under home directory tmux uh, is it just like that? Could be but when installing tmux you have a wiki and a lot of people use tmux you have a wiki where you can find everything getting started and all of the different configurations that people like and then of course you have the holy bible of command line interface which is the man pages and tmux and there here as well you have all of the commands but let's get now to my config in tmux i did before make a description for every command in my tmux configuration but i took it away and that is again because i want you guys to figure out what all of these mean and try to do your own but i will explain some so this here the set prefix is exactly what i was saying it's the control command from b so i unbind the control command so control b to control a and then what else do I have? Um, I can, oh, here I set, basically, I made it so that whenever I open, let's say we're in Tmux, and I go to my folder boxes, where I have different hack the box boxes, and I open a new pane. That pane will then automatically be in the directory where I was before. I don't believe that is the default setting, and it was terribly frustrating of always having to go back to where I was, so I just made it like that, that it always spawns in the current path. I just like it like that. Then here, there is some general uh, settings. One of them allows you to um, scroll up as far as you want to go check what you've had in the past. So for example, let's say we run um, let's go to opt locate lint piece. No, I'm not going to do that. But let's say you run lint piece to get all of the information on a target, right? That's a lot of output and you after have to read that output. Well, if you don't have history limits up to a lot <laughs> on and then you cannot scroll up and go read everything and that will be annoying so that's why i set this history limit uh what else oh the mouse on that's just so that i can scroll up because i don't believe that is normally what you have to do you have to press Control i uh, a go into copy mode which would be um those brackets and, and then you can only scroll up and I didn't like that. So I can scroll up and it will automatically enter the copy mode. See, these are little things that you can do. Now, Tmux does as well have plugins. I will let you figure all of that out by yourself. I will show you though what plugin I use and that is this one, Nixing Minimal. I do like the minimal look, it's just easy. Um, quickly cycling back to ZSH, uh, SH, ZSHRC, the, 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 the theme I use is candy. There is a lot of different themes, I didn't even look through them all, I just took the first one I liked and that was candy and so I use candy. Going back to Tmux, this one was very nice. It's just minimal, not a lot of noise. And I like that too. What else is there? Okay, this thing. You might have noticed that when I 
run one of my thousand aliases, let's say for the Hack the Box Academy, the VPN, automatically the IP address that this interface will give me is displayed here. I did this by using a, a little script. Let's go to the home directory. This little script. And I'm not sure if I'm going to show you this yet. I will let you figure out how I did that. But essentially what it does is it just looks at all my interfaces. And as soon as it detects a turn zero or turn one interface, so let's say I have two panes and I want to connect to both the Academy VPN as well as the Hack the Box VPN, then both these interfaces will be shown here. And I don't all the time have to say if config and then look to find the IP, it will just be shown down there. It's just neat and easy. Question number 100, how do I take my notes? Now, a few of you have asked and have praised me or whatever, been very nice about the way I take my notes. And I really um, put a lot of emphasis on it now. I was dreading it before. I hated uh, taking notes, but now I've just gotten used to it. Essentially, I use Obsidian, uh, which is free. And the appearance, I use Obsidian Nord. I did use Minimal, you can see a pattern but now I use just Obsidian Nord. It looks, it looks nice, I like it. And it adapts the base color scheme to my system, but essentially I use dark all the time. Um, I believe it does that because my Windows uh, settings adapt the theme um, from day to night. So when it becomes night, it goes to dark. And when it's daytime, it's just light. But no, essentially I like dark mode better. One thing I do want to say in Obsidian that is very nice is this setting right here. And that is whenever I take a screenshot, let's say I am here in the landing page, but let's create a folder, call it test, and then go inside of this folder. Let's open this and call this one test test. No test between brackets because it's test within a test. If I take a screenshot, let's say I take a screenshot of this gray box and I paste that screenshot here, automatically an evidence folder will be created with all of the screenshots. This is incredibly useful. Uh, in case just later you have to go back and look at all your evidence and uh, yeah I just found that setting to be very very nice and so I created a subfolder name call it evidence and yes but the reason why I like obsidian is because it's all stored locally so this hacking folder can be found on my uh, local directory tree and so everything that I write here is saved in Markdown locally inside of text files on my terminal. I can show you this. Let's go to Tmux and go into, I believe it's the workspace. And there you have it, hacking. So let's go into hacking. And uh, let's go to, okay, let's go to test and just write some stuff. There you go. That was a bit loud, I'm sorry for that. But let's go into test. And there you will have test, um, brackets test.md markdown. And you can now cap, uh, cat that file and it will show you that text. So yeah, th this is why I like Obsidian. And so the last thing I wanna show you is it has also to do with notes but it's the holy bible of my notes i cannot share it with you because there's a lot of stuff that just you know you will have to do your own but um i can only encourage all of you to get a git book everything i learn about hacking 
wherever it is, I write down in this kit book. It's just basically one thing I am incredibly proud of, very thorough with, and uh, I can only encourage all of you to do the same. I can unfortunately not share mine because first of all, it's mine and I would love to, for you to do your own. But then also there's stuff in there that I cannot share. But I can only highly recommend you guys write a git book where you save everything you learn about hacking inside of. So you can see here is some mantras, just some principles that I write down that I should always remember, you know, there is always more than meets the eye. For example, consider all points of view or if you're doing hack the box, well, there is always a way in. It's just you haven't found it yet. You know, it's these little things that uh, help. And if you're stuck or whatever, you just come and read that, take a break, have some water, go outside, take some fresh air, come back in and you'll be good to go. So this is the one page I will show you. But the rest, just do your own and you'll like yourself for it later. Also, be thorough with it. Have different subtitles, sub pages, you know, divide it into all different protocols. Be thorough with it. Uh, add screenshots, uh, add the commands, make the commands nice in command line language, you know, make them stand out. Use headers, use header one, header two, header three to make it all very organized, like ha hack tricks, basically. Uh, you create your own book and the, the more the more time you spend in the industry the more impressive this book is going to become and it's just going to be a repository of everything you know and another thing is we are entering the age of ai and uh, soon we'll be able to train our own local ais and if you can then feed that ai with this book it will just essentially be a huge memoir of everything you've learned and then you can just ask hey how do i do this really quick bam 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 it gives you the command you know so be thorough with these notes and you'll be great and i believe that is it if there's anything i forgot let me know i hope you liked this video uh, i hope i could show you a bit of value it was not a very interactive video or not a lot of stuff happening but you got a glimpse into what i use again Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you liked what I just produced and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.